Hey, what's up everyone? Adam here with Probably Got This, and today we have another build for you all. This is my new build series, my Invincible Solo Builds. This series will focus on taking a class and making a build that can hit hard, is easy to play, and that can survive with ease, and most importantly, solo the game. The best part about this build today is you don't even need a mythic item. So welcome to my Invincible Solo Nightblade build. So in this build, I'm going to try to set this up differently and give you item loadouts that you can play not only at high CP levels, but item sets that you can go for at level 3, level 25 to level 50 that way you're guided through the build from level 3 and not just from level CP 160 I think a lot of times players don't know what to do in the beginning stages of builds So I want to try to alleviate that by giving you beginner setups to work towards and then have a full setup That will really make the build shine real quick I just want to give a shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for the support I really do appreciate it And if you want to check out my twitch channel twitch.tv slash probably got this I stream Tuesday through Friday down in the description below and our discord which has helpful people and lastly our website I probably got this.com where we have written builds and guides on there as well now for the race we are going to use the Khajiit because the Khajiit has some insane passives that really pair well with the Nightblade and one of those passives is feline ambush which gives us 12 percent more crit damage and healing which will be nice for damage and staying alive as a solo player lunar blessings and robustness also just give us very nice uh resource pools like uh, recovery and more resources in general uh for health stamina and magicka which is a really nice thing to have now obviously we're playing the nightblade class and the nightblade for me has always been a tricky one for the most part i've always struggled to find a happy medium with solo play because i felt like i was running out of resources or not hitting hard enough or not bursting hard enough I just never felt really comfortable with it but this build I have tried to simplify and make it as strong as I can for any player to play and I love the burstiness of this build you can just do some insane damage to trash pools so this is one of my favorite iterations of the night blade that I have made and so I'm excited to share it with you so let's get into the stats here the stats are 64 points in the stamina which is pretty easy to level up you just got to dump all your points into stamina as you're going from level 3 we're sitting at around 34.8k max stamina right now 22.3k max health 19.2k max magicka and depending on which bar we're on you know that will switch a little bit and some of our other stats will as well uh, for the food, we're using Longfin Pacing Melon Sauce. You can also use uh, Dubious Camoran Throne for Stam Recovery, and you can use Braised Rabbit as well. But I'm using the uh, Longfin Pasty. And for the Munda Stone, we are using the Lover for more spell and physical penetration. I was finding that I really needed this. I was lacking that a lot uh, in the first iteration of the build. But if you want to use Thief and Shadow, you can. But all the Munda Stones are all in the base game, so you just have to find them on the map. Now let's move on to the skills that we're using in this build. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the setup of the final iteration of the build, explain the skills and why they're there, and then I'm going to show you how you should level your character from level 3 to reach these skills quickly or efficiently. So starting on the back bar, we have Air Barrage. Air Barrage is a skill that is a staple damage over time. It does insane physical damage in an area, so make sure to always have this on your bar and always up. The next skill is Razor Caltrops. This is one of my favorite skills in the game because it does damage over time, it slows the enemy, and it applies major breach which reduces their physical and spell penetration which will be really nice for you the next skill is one of your best buff skills this is relentless focus this is going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 60 for every light and heavy attack up to five times heavy should put two stacks on it and light should put one but when it hits five stacks you have the option to use the ability to fire an arrow which does a lot of damage and heals you for 33 percent of it but it's up to you if you want to do a little bit more damage with this in your rotation but i will go through that a little bit more later in the video with the rotation but it is a little bit more advanced if you want to use the arrow i don't use the arrow all the time next skill is Mirage. Mirage is going to be another pre-buff fight skill that's going to give you a minor resolve and major evasion, which is going to help mitigate a lot of damage for you. The next skill is Leeching Strikes, another pre-buff fight skill that is really, really good. This allows you to heal and gain stamina back when we lighten heavy attack. This is going to really help us with our sustain. The ultimate for this bar is Soul Tether. This is your oh crap ultimate where if you're in a lot of trouble it's going to do a lot of damage in an area and it's also going to heal you as well the front bar we're using two hand wrecking blow is the first skill this is our main single target spammable and it goes in nicely in a rotation it is going to increase your light attack damage as well so you want to make sure you weave that well and i'll show you how to do that in the rotation section the next skill is reverse slice now the reason i have this on the bar is because i use it for aoe fight executes okay so this does uh 300 more damage to enemies that are less than 50 health 
and other enemies take 100% of the damage inflicted to the primary target. So you don't have to use this. You can switch this for something else if you would like, but I like using this in AoE like execute phases because sometimes there's a lot of mobs and you need to kill them down quicker. But our main AoE spammable is later on the bar here. The next skill is Camouflage Hunter. This is just on the bar for the slottable ability, which is major savagery and prophecy, increasing your weapon and spell critical by 2629. So you're just using this for the slottable effect. All you gotta do is keep it on your bar. And if you do flank, you are gonna get minor berserk for five seconds. Um, after dealing critical damage on the enemy's flank. Something else that's really nice about this, so just have this on your bar, you don't have to activate it. The next skill is Stampede. This is our main AoE spammable. This is going to just do insane amounts of damage in trash fights. This is going to help you get out of uh, situations. It's gonna help you just fly across the room. I love this ability. It's one of my favorite skills in the game. The last skill is our main single target boss execute this is killer's blade this is going to deal 300 percent more damage to enemies below 25 percent health make sure that you use this because again in an execute phase this is going to be one of your best skills to use so you want to do that on the boss our ultimate is our main ultimate here incapacitating strike this is a fantastic ultimate the ultimate cost is so low you have this up all the time and so make sure to use this every single time it's up. I'll talk about it in the rotation, but this is going to allow you to do 20% more damage from your attacks for six seconds after you use it. So you want to always weave this into your rotation. Now, the progression of skills, okay? Like I said, at level three, you're not going to have all this unlocked, right? So how should you do everything? Well, you're using basically the first um, three out of four uh, two-hand lines. So all you gotta do is put the uh, Wrecking Blow in there, you'll get Stampede really quickly, and then Reverse Slice, uh, so you can have all those very, very quickly. Uh, for Killer's Blade on the front bar here, literally you're gonna start off with Killer's Blade, Veiled Strike, and you're gonna start off with Swallow Soul. So put all three of those on your bar, and you need Mirage and Relentless Focus, so as soon as you get Lotus Fan, put that on your bar as well, then you'll get Mirage pretty quickly. Put incapacitating strike on your bar as soon as you get it and then take off lotus fan when you get mirage and then level up until relentless focus for shadow you really don't need anything you just need the passives so make sure to just put like two of these on your bar somewhere and then for siphoning you need leeching strikes so you're gonna have to put like one or two on your bar as well as you level up but it should be pretty simple and put soul tether there as quickly as you can okay now when it comes to the guilds the fighters guild for um camouflage hunter just uh, do dolmens it's the easiest thing to do you'll get this up very very quickly and you'll have camouflage hunter very very quickly uh for the bow line you're gonna get that has the second skill you'll have that very quickly and then you just put that on your bar and you'll level up the passives and then the last skill is uh the razor cow chops remember i do have a video in the description that shows you how to get to level three in the assault and support line uh, in less than 15 minutes at level 10 for pvp do that and then just do some battlegrounds to get razor cow chops now let's go into the passives the passives are really simple you want all your assassination shadow and siphoning passives okay they're all really really good some ones i just want to point out that are really great okay um hemorrhage which increases your crit, crit damage by 10 percent dealing critical damage grants you and your group minor savagery increasing your weapon critical rating by 13 14 for 20 seconds it's just amazing you also increase your weapon and spell critical by the amount of assassination ability slotted um and then there's some other things here with the shadow shadow barrier shadow barrier is a passive that you can really utilize if you do switch in dark cloak Dark Cloak's like a really solid um, self-heal for you. Uh, when you do that, you actually get major resolve. But if you're not using any of the shadow abilities, you really don't need shadow barrier. But I really, really like it just if you do want to like opt into any of these. Uh, but these other passives, again, um, are just there if you want to use uh, like Dark Cloak. Uh, or any of these other skills or this uh, ultimate up here bolstering darkness but the main ones again are assassination and then siphoning does have some solid ones as well that's going to just help increase uh, and min max some of your stats so um, I'd recommend getting all the passives because I do think there's a lot of really good skills for Nightblade now for bow you can get every passive for two hand you can get every passive as well for armor you can get every medium armor passive for guild you can get the fighters guild passives for undaunted you can get the undaunted passives and then uh, for race, you obviously want to get the Khajiit passives. Now, let's move on to the armor, okay? So, again, I'm going to show you the full iteration of the armor build. And then I'll give you progression of armor sets you should go for at level 3 all the way to CP 160. And then alternate things you can use if you don't have this stuff. So, the main piece, again, Briarheart. Briarheart is so good in my opinion. It's a farmable set in the overland of Rothgar. Uh, you just got to do world bosses, delves, open chests. It's very simple. It's going to give us a lot of crit chance. And it's going... 
to give us the ability when we do crit damage you increase your weapon spell damage and then when this effect's active your critical strikes heal you this is just really nice for solo play i love it and i have divines on it and max stamina on the body pieces monster set is storm fist storm fist is just hit so hard um this is vet tempest island and uh vet tempest island is a base game dungeon and we do divines and medium on this with max stamina but this is just doing tons of damage with the two-piece set. I, I love this monsters. I've, I've really started to like it. I didn't like it at first, but I'm really starting to like this a lot more. The other one we're using is Vicious Affinity, and this is from the Craglorn Trials, okay? These trials are the easiest trials in the game. You can do them on normal. Okay, this is going to give us Minor Slayer, increasing your damage done to trial uh, to dungeon, trial, and arena monsters by 5%. It's going to give us crit chance, and it's going to reduce the cost of your stamina abilities by 8%. And when the enemy you recently damaged dies, you restore 2454 stamina and gain major expedition for 8 seconds. So this is really, really nice for solo play. I love this item set. I absolutely love it. It's easy to farm. You can find trials in our guild and in the zone chat in Craglorn. It's very easy to do. The other thing to keep in mind is you do not need the gold jewelry. You can do like purple if you'd like. But I'm using a two-hand battle axe of Vicious Ophidian. Uh, and for the jewelry, I'm using Robust and Stamina Recovery Enchants. For the bow, I'm just using Bow of Agility. The reason I'm using that is because, again, it's easy to get. It adds max stamina. But if you want to switch this with one of the arena bows or something like that, or you want to you know, switch this with something else, you can. But again, this is a very easy uh, build to make. So I'm trying to keep it as easy as possible. So the progression of the item sets for this build is at level three, you're going to want to try to go for Hunting's Rage like normal twilight's embrace uh these are craftable sets right and you're not going to be able to craft them yourself as soon as you get in the game but someone else can or you can just start working towards them now as you level to level 25 you can go for vipers which is in fungal grotto you can go for venomous smite which is an overland set in uh western skyrim and you can go for leviathan which is in a base game dungeon crypt of hearts these are all easy sets to go for when you hit 50 you should be able to make uh something for yourself like twilight's vipers leviathan venomous hunting's rage at least the craftable ones obviously but then when you get to cp 160 you definitely should be able to make a crafted set for you so i'd like you to have at least one full set of huntings or twilights and then you could either have vipers leviathan or venomous smite as your main set so then once you do that you can go farm briarheart get your briarheart set okay and then go into one of the craglorn trials craglorn trials will be able to be done um at that level and you can get start getting your vicious ophidian stuff and then after that you can get your monster set storm fist uh in vet tempest island now if you feel comfortable doing that the other way around you can but that's the progression i would do now the alternates with this again is that if you cannot stay alive you should be able to with this build but if you can't use the ring pale, ring of the pale order you can take off one of the rings of vicious ophidian put on a shoulder piece of vicious ophidian and uh use like a helmet of um slime crawl or a shoulder piece of slime crawl to get that crit chance as well but you shouldn't have to use ring of the pale order with this build um it's pretty solid and you can stay alive with like briar hearts proc a lot of the times so let's go into the cp now the cp is pretty standard for the most part again i i'm gonna give you kind of like the minor stuff that you need as you see here, we're going 15 to Reaving Blows, 15 to Fighting Finesse, 15 to Deadly Aim, 15 to Master at Arms. The rest is used on the points that you have left. To get to this point, to even unlock these four stars, all you got to have is around 100 and I think 40 CP. So you just start working towards it. Once you get these stars, get everything else that you can after that. For the red, okay, we're doing 50 into Rejuvenation, 50 into Survival Instincts, 50 into Bloody Renewal, and then you got 50 into Sustained by Suffering. Again, it should take you about 140 CP to get to this point, according to my calculations. And the rest of these, you just put in when you have the extra points. The green CP is up to you, again, because it's really not a lot of combat-based stuff. It does have some things, but it's really not. It's really just up to you. Now, let's get into the rotation, okay? The rotation with Nightblade, for me, I always try to keep it as simple as possible. So when you start the fight, you're going to use all your pre-buff skills, right? So you're going to first use Mirage. You're going to use um, Relentless, Focus, and then Leeching Strikes. Then you go Arrow, Caltrops, Switch Bars, Crit Charge, and then Wrecking Blow, Light Attack, Wrecking Blow, Light Attack, Wrecking Blow, Light Attack, Wrecking Blow, Light Attack. And after that, Switch Bars again. You apply your dots, Switch Back, Crit Charge, Wrecking Blow, Light Attack, Wrecking Blow, Light Attack. So let's go over that again. So you got Mirage, Leeching Strikes, and you see here I have five stacks on that middle skill. If you wanna weave in the arrow attack that you just see there, it's gonna do more damage, but it is a little bit more advanced. But if you don't want to, you can keep it at five stacks and it will stay there for 60 seconds, which is a huge buff, a huge buff, right? So here we go, Relentless Focus, 
Barrage, Leeching Strikes. Remember, do Air Barrage, then Caltrops because it's easier to weave, switch bars, crit charge, and then let's talk about Wrecking Blow. Wrecking Blow, you can hit your Light Attack when you're in the Wind Up. So look, Wind Up, Light Attack. Wind Up, Light Attack. Wind Up, Light Attack. You want to make sure you do that because you're going to get 40% increased damage on your Light Attacks after you use this ability, right? The only other difference in this rotation is if you're in a trash pool and they are under 50% health, you use Reverse Slice. This is the execute for your AoE, okay? It's easy, easy to use, and it does damage to people, right, in the area. Now, the other thing I want to mention, you see that my ultimate is available. When this ultimate is available, you use it every single time because it's going to increase your damage by 20% for six seconds, okay? So you'll see here, this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go through, like, I have my rotation, right? I'm going to go uh, Focus, Mirage, Leeching Strikes, Caltrops, uh, Barrage, and then this. I'm going to go uh, Ultimate, and then I'm going to Wrecking Blow, Light Attack, Wrecking Blow, Light Attack, Wrecking Blow, Light Attack. Okay, I'm going to switch bars, do it again. And then whenever your pre-buffs are back up, you just reapply them. But that's really the rotation, y'all. It's very, very simple. Um, in a single target fight, you use Wrecking Blow until you get them into Execute Phase. When you get them into Execute Phase at single target, you use your Killer's Blade. And uh, if they're in AoE Execute Phase, you can use um, Reverse Slice. It's very, very simple, but remember with solo play that things can change. So it's not always cut and dry. And sometimes you just have to kind of ad lib some things uh, and go off, you know, what you feel like you've got to do in that moment. If you need to heal, if you need to run away a second, you might have to do that, right? So you just have to keep that in mind as you play solo with these rotations. But if you've missed any of my other solo builds, I've got four other solo builds out right now that are invincible solo builds. And a lot of these are gonna be on the website here very soon. So make sure to check those out in the cards above. But if you do like this, make sure to like, subscribe, heavy attack that bell icon to stay up to date on all the content in the channel. And make sure to just not miss any of the builds that I post or any other guides in the channel. I really do appreciate the support you all. And if you have any questions, remember to leave me a comment below and you can check out all our social links. But until next time, y'all just remember have faith to be great and I'll see you on ESO.